What is going on, everybody? It is Joey of Underage Packers joining you for another episode. This week, I am always joined by my co-host, Big B. How are we feeling? The signature intro. Doing good. Feeling good. Yeah. It's actually been a while since we've talked last Sunday. But uh, today we are joined by someone very special. The New York Times ranked him number one in social media content creation. The Milwaukee Journal Central had him in their top 10 meme creators in Wisconsin. Please welcome Tyler Herrick. I cannot verify nor deny any of that information, but I am super happy to be here. What is up, guys? What is up? You know, you were on Green Bay Today's. I'm a little bit upset with Green Bay today. I mean, we had, he was our first guest. We brought him on here and then he only, he does never invites us on. Little disappointed in that, but it apparently has inside sources on Greg Roberts. Inside sources. <laughs> yeah. Not sure what's going on there, but c- can you confirm that Tyler Irvin was named after you? Tyler Irvin was in fact, maybe named after me. That's, that's what I will say about that matter. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I can't comment any further. There are pending uh, legal obligations yeah. that I have that I can no longer comment on that. We'll but I, I will that. say maybe. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> but yeah, so Tyler is a social media creator for Cheesehead TV. Um, you know, we're just getting the whole, the whole completion, the whole trinity of Cheesehead TV. Um, now we just need to complete it with Banky. Yep. Um, but yeah, obviously today we will be previewing the Packers-Lions game week two. It never ends, just a constant constant circle of previewing, recapping games. Uh, this should be a pretty interesting one, especially just because of our history with the Lions in the past few years. But let's first talk about some injury news here. Obviously, it was a pretty injury-riddled game for the Packers this past Sunday. Uh, Lucas Patrick and Lane Taylor going out on the offensive line. They still held up pretty good. Lane Taylor is out for the season, and Lucas Patrick is back to practicing along with Billy Turner. And as well, the big one, Kenny Clark, out with a groin injury in the first half of the Lion, or the Vikings game, and he did not practice all this week. So not looking good for Kenny Clark. On the Lions side, quite a few injuries on their defense, and as well as their star wide receiver, Kenny Galladay, um, I'm not sure what he's out with, but he was out with last Sunday, and it's not looking good for him this week either. All three of their cornerbacks are facing injuries. We don't know really if who's going to play. It looks like Jeff Akuda might be good, but Desmond and Trufant and Justin Coleman are still questionable. So Kenny Clark is obviously a big one. So let, let's talk about him first. He's a big part of the defense pass-wise and run-wise. First of all, let, let's start with who do you think replaces Kenny Clark, both of you guys? Well, I mean, I, I think it's it's going to be um, you, you, who did they just sign Willis or Win? I mean, um, you know, Win came up uh, for the defensive line. I think obviously he, he'll get a shot if Kenny does not go. Uh, but I will say this about Kenny: I think I think it's smart to hold him out. I mean, if if he if he really has a nagging groin injury, I think everybody knows groin injuries can last anywhere between half to even sometimes even full seasons. I mean, groin injuries tend to lag a little bit. So uh, keeping him out, especially uh, with the value that he brings to the Packers, I think would be smart. So yeah, I think Wynn uh, would come in and, and, and hopefully do a good job. I mean, I was kind of hoping it would be Mac, but obviously something's going on there. I mean, like, uh, like Nagler says, he had the uh, proverbial cup of coffee in Green Bay and mm-hmm. uh, we don't really know why. Uh, yeah. But he was let go fairly promptly, so I'm interested to see to see what happens there. But I think it'll be a big deal. I I don't know. I really don't. I think, um, you know, look. I mean, the reality is, is I had I had Green Bay splitting with the Lions. I mean, last year we didn't lead them for a single second. So, and I think everybody throws that stat out there, but it's true. I mean, we're we don't really know. So, how much an absence of Kenny Clark impacts the game? I don't know who replaces them. Hopefully it's, it's win. And, and those guys in there, maybe, you know, Lancaster and stuff can step up. So we'll see. Yeah, definitely agree. If it's going to be something that's uh, irritating him all season, give him that rest, uh, especially against the lions and uh, hopefully can get be more recovered come week three against the Saints. So maybe what are your thoughts on Kenny's injury at this point? Well, it's kind of concerning, but I think he'll be fine. Mm-hmm. He's he's a tough boy, very tough boy. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he gets back to practice this week. We'll see if uh, maybe Kiki or Adams gets thrown back in there. But uh, hoping the best for Kenny at this point. Stay focusing on the defense, and you brought it up. Just the Packers Lions game 
like and I like I said at the start here, we didn't lead for a single second in either of those games, and I think it could really be attributed to both their wide receivers and Matt Stafford. You got Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones out there. Uh, what would you say is was the biggest problem uh, for the Packers in last week or the last season against the Lions? Um, I think a lot of it uh, just generally, I don't know if I can necessarily pinpoint, um, you know, one specific thing, but just generally was consistency. We had a lot of issues, you know, just making sure that everything that we were doing, you would have these great explosive plays and then two plays later, it would be almost nothing. So, you know, I think consistency was, was one of the biggest issues there. Yeah, especially with Kevin Keenan, Marvin Jones, we were just talking about it earlier. They're burners. So they now they got TJ Hawkinson coming in, in his second year. And obviously their new free agent signing, Adrian Peterson, coming back to Lambo. That should be interesting. Uh he he did do pretty good with the Redskins his past two years over there. But Big B, let me know let me get your thoughts on this. Lions run game in general. They got DeAndre Swift there with them as a rookie and now AP. And as well as Kerryon Johnson, they've put a quite a bit of draft capital into the running back room the past few years. So uh, what do you think we see from the run offense on Sunday? Well, it's, it's hard to say since I'm not a Lions fan, but I'm Thank not God. scared. Of any, yeah, I'm not scared of anybody in the Vikings. I mean, well, Lions running back room, except Adrian Peterson, because I have nightmares of him every single night running over the Packers defense. Yes. Uh, what do you think about a- the AP signing, Tyler? Uh, I mean, it, it, look, it, Adrian Peterson still has a little bit of quickness in him, whether people want to like, he looked good last week. That is mm-hmm. shocking to me. He looked good. He still showed a little bit of burst. He still sh- showed a little bit of agility. So, yeah, I don't think uh, the Packers should sleep on AP. I mean, he's still AP. Is he, you know, early years, Adrian Peterson? Probably not. But, I mean, like, like, the dude the dude was eating last week. He was straight up eating. So, yeah, I, I think it's something to be aware of. Look, Dalvin Cook, he got his a little bit, especially in that first quarter last game against, uh, you know, Green Bay. So run defense is still a little bit, dude, and if Kenny Clark is out, <laughs> you yeah. know, it might be something to definitely watch. But, you know, if the, if Green Bay can run up the score like we did last week, it really won't be much of an issue because then Matthew Stafford is going to go have to go there and start slinging. Not necessarily that that's a bad thing because I think they have a better chance than Minnesota had. But, you know, mm-hmm. at the same time, Look, if we can just hold them and get them, get them in those third and long situations, I mean, this is this is something that uh, won't be that big of a deal if we don't make it that big of a deal. Yeah, especially with like you said with Clark out and you got Chris Barnes, an unexperienced uh, guy going in there. Obviously, AP has plenty of experience against the Packers, but hopefully, it's not too much of a problem. We will have to see though. The Packers running game, we saw some really interesting stuff last week. Um, we we'll go Jamal Williams getting quite a few snaps. Uh, we, we talked about it on Monday. Our favorite thing was just the split back formations with uh, both Deguara and Williams. Uh, what do you, do you think we can expect more of the same? Let's hear Big Beef's thought on this first, just because he's a Jamal Williams kind of sewer here. Uh, bring out your your messaging sign. Um, but do you think we see more of the same as what we saw in Minnesota, or uh, just more involvement with certain guys? Jamal Williams is the GOAT, the GOAT. That's all you need to know. Okay. Well, thanks for the <laughs> comments. Uh, uh, what, what do you think, Tyler, about just uh, seeing A.J. Dillon? We'll probably still see mostly um, Aaron Jones. What do you think about the other running backs in that room this week? Look, I mean, it's, it's a running back by committee. I mean, Aaron Jones isn't going anywhere. Jamal Williams isn't going anywhere. And A.J. Dillon seems to be trending upward already. So it's week two. I mean, uh, the reality is, is that uh, – A.J. Dillon will probably get a little bit more snaps, um, but nobody pass protects like the GOAT, Jamal Williams. The GOAT, <laughs> Jamal Williams. <laughs> uh, but, no, I mean, it's it's going to be a running back by committee. I think they're going to do whatever it takes to win the game. Now, uh, if there's going to be a lot of man coverage looks, which I think the Lions tend to run, you may see a little bit more of Aaron Jones. I mean, look, Jamal Williams was out there this season uh, running a lot of routes and doing a lot of things like that. So you might see a little bit more of them. and. Even as much as LaFleur wants to put A.J. Dillon out there, uh, there's a possibility that he may not get as many snaps as mm-hmm. they want him to because uh, if there's a lot of man coverage, you send him out on wheel routes, next thing you know, you're hitting big gainers. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be hard for to take Aaron Jones off the field. But like we mentioned earlier, let's get back 
Uh, that's running game for both teams. Let's talk about the passing game. Uh, starting off with the Packers, Aaron Rodgers had a, a fine game with uh, three wide receivers. Just across. fine. Yes. Just fine. <laughs> just, just fine. We were pretty excited for it, just like we were for Nagler. Kind of excited. Um, yeah, kind of. So Devontae Adams should feast again today. And I wrote an article on this, just how much he's trusted his wide receivers and how we worked just fine with his three wide receivers that he trusted. He said it in a press conference the other day that trust is the most valuable thing a wide receiver can earn from him. So what, do you think we'll see kind of the same thing as last week? Uh, obviously, season is very young, but just a lot of um, Adams and MVS. It's going to be hard to take away the ball from Adams. Um, or do you think we'll see it kind of more uh, spreading the ball around more um, and maybe EQ gets activated for today or Sunday? Well, you see, you look at uh, Patricia's history, right? Obviously comes from the Patriots organization. And one thing that the Patriots do very, very well, and it's carried over into Detroit's game is, is, is that uh, they like to take away what a team does best, right? So if they're going to do anything, and if anybody would advise them to do anything, it would be take away Devontae Adams. If they can somehow eliminate Devontae Adams, which is very hard to do, but if they can somehow double him, triple him, do what they need to do to just bracket and and roll coverage his way, I think, uh, you know, still, I have a lot of faith in Alan Lazard. Um, despite the drops, I still have faith in uh, MVS. Will they let him get over the top this week? I don't necessarily think. But, I mean, we'll see. I mean, look, Alan Lazard is still there. Uh, you know, all of the options out of the backfield can catch. A.J. Dillon can catch. Jamal Williams, of course, can catch because he's the GOAT! Oh, I dropped my headphones, but you know what I mean. He's, too excited. he's out there, and, and he can do a lot of things. <laughs> all right, Big B, what do you think of uh, – well, even considering you can bring Jamal Williams into this as well. Uh, I love Okay, it's what do you think of the wide receiver involvement this week? Well, you've got to get Jamal Williams in the passing game because I didn't see much of that last week. I, didn't, I wanted more. I want more of Jamal Williams in every category, defense, offense, special teams, oh, okay. everything. What, what position Jamal do you Williams. want him to play on defense? Can what? he go on that defense tackle? He can go on defensive tackle, middle linebacker, safety, corner, and every other position I'm forgetting at the moment. I think your sources might be the same just for our, our New York Times rankings of Tyler. Uh, and next, so speaking of the defense, going back to that, um, run defense was obviously a problem last week, and we're kind of going all over the place. But I think, like you said, it's yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be pretty shaky for the Packers. And like you said, and really what I thought at halftime of that week one game was really we're, we're struggling with Dalvin, especially after that first drive. But we're gonna. I feel we can generate enough. We're obviously dominating the time of possession at this point. Uh, that if we can keep generating on offense, it won't even matter what he does. So we definitely got to improve there. So I was wondering this week: is there really a possible X solution to these problems? And we really don't know what the problem is. Whether it's Mike Pettin or uh, the personnel issue, like we saw in. MC championship game. We don't know what the answer solution or problem is. Um, but do you think we will might find out more about that this week? Uh, and what are you, your just thoughts on, uh, again, on the run defense? Yeah. About the run defense specifically, I think, like you said, there's, there's not necessarily one thing. I mean, it's, yeah, you can, you can blame personnel. You can blame uh, you know, whatever you can play the blame game all day long, but the, I think I think the reality is that people just need to play their keys, right? And mm -hmm. and Zedarius talks about this all the time. Every single one of his press conferences, he uses the phrase, "We just have to play our keys," and I think that's really exactly what it comes down to. You just mm -hmm. got to play your guy and not get out of position. So, look, and uh, and Mike Patton likes the bend don't break defense, all that kind of stuff. But you know, I think as the season goes along, run defense is not necessarily going to be as much of an issue as it was against the 49ers. Look, mm -hmm. the Eagles did it to us a little bit, um, you know, and, and obviously the 49ers. But besides those two teams, I don't really see where else we were getting gashed that much, you know, again, last year. So, yeah, it's a different year, different personnel, different people. But I really don't – I'm not seeing the same type of – you know, domination that the 49ers have, you know, and like, and exactly like Mike, Pet Mike Petton said, 
look, the 49ers are unique in the fact that they have what five first round picks, <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? On their defensive line. And I know that's defensively, but even offensively, like they were able to just run over uh, green Bay with the way that they, that the way that they did. So the likelihood of that happening again is kind of slim to none. So yeah, we didn't look great against Cook last year. Do I think the run defense is great? Absolutely not. Uh, mm-hmm. Do I think that it's going to be as big of an issue as it was last year? No, I know. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing is going to have to be just forcing teams into those uh, passing downs and that's really just putting exactly. duct tape on it there. But we, we got a great secondary Jair Alexander had a fantastic game. Um, Shandon Sullivan and Raven Green looking to improve their rules. Uh, Big B, let us know your thoughts on the run defense. Um, we obviously talked about a Kenny Clark list. Uh, but what do you think? Is there a set solution? Solution? Um, I don't know. Play better? I'm not really sure. I mean, Tyler pretty much hit all of it, so – I mean, play better. That's really it, though. I mean, he's not lying. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to overcomplicate it. Play better. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's really what it comes down to. Look, if somebody's running and running and running and you know they're going to run, run, and run, guess what you want to do? I don't know. Stop the freaking run. Like, can you you try? Can you just do something? Like, play better. Play your keys. You know, that's – Everyone do their part. He's not wrong. I really think Big B needs to be the the Packers coach now at this point. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Getting some I, offers. He's, I mean, he's coming for Mike Pettin's job at this point. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty good. Just, I'm mad. I don't, at him, so. I, yeah, you, you just help you. All right, go go cover two. I I learned it in Madden. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great. But, advice. No, you're right, Joey. Like you were saying before, Joey. Just real quickly, like mm-hmm. if you can get him in those third and long situations, dude. Like. Next thing you know, you can roll out those dime packages that Patton likes to roll out. And next thing you know, you've got some of the fastest receivers, the fastest people on the field. I mean, like, yeah. and that's that's how you stop them. Mm-hmm. You can't, you cannot cover, you cannot get open when some of those guys are out there. Even like freaking uh, Perry Nich- or Nicholson or whatever his name is out there, he's like the fastest cornerback like ever. Like I, mm-hmm. can, I, can't, I think he ran like a four three or something like that. He's <laughs> ridiculous. So you throw people like that out there, you you're going to be okay. Yeah. So I, I think we pretty much got everything off our script, just previewing the Packers and Lions, interesting teams that we really don't know too much about uh, at this point, especially the Lions. We were going to have time to play a game here of captioning the meme, uh, but unfortunately we were not able to make that happen. So Let's let's just kind of bring back a segment we we tried to do a little earlier in our pod, a young podcast history. The league hates us. And this is more like our, our former players hates us. Uh, Jermichael Finley uh, going at it on Twitter uh, with the one and only Aaron Nagler. I'll show the tweets for our YouTube viewers right now. He said some very interesting things. Um, just going after Nagler for bringing up. Uh, great block by Bakhtiari, and then uh, this this is what got me here. After he gets done just going off on Nagler, uh, he finds out – he quotes the Cheesehead TV tweet about some article about Lane Taylor, and he says uh, this is why they should have drafted more offensive linemen. Like, I think he's just been brainwashed to think the Packers draft – was just all bad, and he doesn't even realize what's going on. Yeah, interesting take there, Jermichael. Look, look, man, J. Mike is, uh, he's a character. Let's say that. I mean, this, this guy, he was going at it. I mean, look, clearly, if you look back at his tweet history, he's trying to promote his podcast. So good mm-hmm. for him, man. I mean, that's what he wants to do. But yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. He knows absolutely, absolutely mm-hmm. nothing about the current Green Bay Packers teams. And that's, that's the reality of the situation. Funny dude, though. Funny dude. I mean, he gave me some laughs. That's for sure online. I mean, this yeah. dude was, I kid you not, he was probably up in our mentions for at least 48 <laughs> hours straight. 48 hours straight, this dude was tweeting at us. And hey, good for him, man. Whatever he wants to do. That's why I, I tweeted out that little video of just kind of closing oh, the door on Jermichael. Yeah, the Have a good one, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Uh, man, he's he's a character. I don't know what to do with him. Yeah. I, Bless him. I'm surprised there's not more uh, former Rodgers teammates who haven't gone the Greg Jennings or Jermichael Finley route. You know, you just start on Undisputed, going on there and saying <laughs> yeah. some things to skip Bayless about Rodgers, and then all of a sudden 
you're in a broadcasting booth. Uh, Big B, what, did, what were your, your simple thoughts um, on your Michael Finley? When you mess with Nagler, I automatically hate you and block you and you will die. I think that is your, wow. literally your pinned tweet. Your pinned <laughs> tweet on your profile is no, like in all caps, nobody mess with Nagler. I did. I did say that. <laughs> you can confirm. <laughs> well, I think I can speak on behalf of everyone at Cheesehead TV when we say that is creepy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. Let, let's end it off with some bold predictions because those well, are always pretty fun and stupid at the same time. <laughs> uh, pretty much same point as fantasy predictions. But uh, first touchdown of the Packers Lions game. Packers Lions. What player? First touchdown? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really hard not to say Jamal Williams. Mm-hmm. I will say that. But Damn. no, I'm gonna I'm 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 just gonna go ahead and say Alan Lazard, man. He he kinda mm-hmm. owned the Lions last year. So yeah, Alan Lazard gets it. That is true. But Jamal Williams <laughs> will get touchdown. One hundred and fifty yards, three touchdowns. Jamal having himself a day. You there heard you it here. First, we heard it here first. This is it. We're Breaking still news. waiting on Jamal and Aaron to hop on the show. Aaron, yeah. li- Aaron Jones literally promised to us on our Zoom that he would come <laughs> on our podcast. Still has That's not that. happened. Oh, it'll happen. It'll happen. You just got to reach out to him. Yeah. Well, we have on Instagram, but we're, we're still waiting for that. Uh, I, I'll, I'll go with just because nobody said it, and I know nobody will say it. I'm going to say David Bakhtiari. Woo! Oh! I know. What kind of celebration with Agent 69? I have know in the end he has zone. been waiting for that for years. Yes, like it's a he, beer truck. He stays awake at night oh. thinking about <laughs> they, they probably have like some beer truck in yeah, the Packers locker room just waiting to come out. He uh, keeps a beer, he keeps a cold a cold one in his sock. <laughs> he yeah. pulls it out and cracks it. <laughs> waiting for it. Uh and uh Pass, who leads the game in passing yards and final score? Ooh, passing yards specifically? Mm-hmm. Not receiving yards, passing yards? Passing, yeah, between quarterbacks. Okay, no joke. I'm going to say Matthew Stafford mm-hmm. leads the game in passing yards. I mean, look, I, and it's, it's only because, uh, you know, they're going to try and bracket Devontae Adams, and the next thing you know, the Green Bay is just going to have to run the ball down their throats. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going to say Matthew Stafford leads them. Look, I, to be com- completely honest, and I don't know if this is your next segment, and I'm completely ruining it, but I had the Lions winning both games this year, both games. Now, after watching last week, it is 19-0, Super Bowl champions, everybody's mm-hmm. MVP, but – I really did. So I, I look. I think Matthew Stafford's going to eat a little bit uh, with his passing yardage. But no, Green Bay wins this game hands down. There's mm-hmm. not even a question. Not even a question. Big B prediction for passing leaders. Please do not say Jamal Williams and final score. <laughs> well, there goes Dexter that. Williams. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, we found out he can play defensive line and middle linebacker and safety. So I guess we'll shut down the idea. Yeah, but I um. This is tough. There's I'm literally gonna, two options. I know, but it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say... There's literally two. I'm going to say Tim Boyle. Okay. Ooh. Go with the obscure one. I'll, wait, wait, wait. That's not good. That's not good. That means Rogers yeah. got hurt. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. No. Can you edit that no. out? Like, I don't want to hear that. No. Don't even put that no. in the atmosphere. Wait, wait, wait. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> wait. Hold on. Rogers... Throws for 700 yards. Packers are up 56 to nothing at halftime. Video game numbers. Love to hear it. And then Boyle comes in and throws for 1,000 yards. I will not shut it down because in Madden 16, uh, you know, I was playing my franchise. Rodgers goes down in week one, and I had Scott Tolzien throw for 5,000 yards on the season. So I will not shut down your your hopes. Uh, I'll I'll agree with Tyler with Matthew Stafford uh, just because he has Marvin Jones going against Kevin King. Uh, final score for me, I'll say 25-17 Packers win. What's the score, Tyler? We got, we got your uh, 27-13. Yeah, yeah, 27-13 Green Bay. Big B? 34. <laughs> Zero. <Just kidding>. 
21 Packers win it. I thought Woo! you were going to just say 30 for Jamal Williams. Uh, yeah, so I think that's a great place to end it off. Let's go into the weekend with another Packers win. Thank you, Tyler, for joining us. Um, thank you. It was a lot of fun, guys. All right, got an email for the Zoom that is already going on. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. <laughs> uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and we will see you later. Peace.